So I want to show you how to keep track of time or how to keep track of events happening at certain in certain intervals in Maximus P but by using JavaScript as the the main uh, like the main tool because I like text programming so the first thing we'll do is make JavaScript object JS and we'll call it keep track of time dot JavaScript if we open this we'll get a blank new JavaScript object so the actual timing of things we want to keep it on the we want to keep track of that in Maximus P because the task object in JS is uh, is low priority so so it's not very precise so we'll be using Max's object timer and um, we want to start this timer uh, just when we start the program one time or if we reset the program so we want to have we want to be able to initialize our program or restart it or whatever we'll call it initialize in this context so I'll make a text uh, box here, message box, and put that into our JS. And in our JS, we'll make we need a function that's equivalent to to this that has the same name. Um, that's the way we call functions functions in JS. So I if I say function in it, oops. So every time like when I when I hit this button, it's going to look for a function called in it and you'll find this um, and in here we want to we want to start the timer object so we need a way to to talk to the max side of things yeah and um, and that's uh, that's a, f a function called mess named uh, which which is a way to send messages to receive objects in max and uh, so we'll we'll need a receive object here, and we'll call that start time. And here, the first argument is the name of the message. Uh, sorry, the the receive object start time, and the second uh, argument is what we want to send, and we just want to send a bang. So that's splendid. Um, and then we want to like this this time value will just be uh, increasing obviously um, but uh, we want to we want to, to check uh, what the timing we want to get this value inside of max um, so we'll make another receive object called timer here and in order for this to make sense I'll probably have to to explain to you the that we will we'll need a loop function uh, we'll we'll need like in, in every program we have we have a or in most programs we have a we have a loop function that's constantly checking for things uh, buttons being pushed or states uh, being altered or whatever and we'll need that here um, and we'll just call it loop and we want this to be called all the time uh, so in max we'll make a, a metro object uh, And we want that to trigger this function called loop. Um, so now, in this way, we the loop function will be triggered every uh, one millisecond. And in the loop function, we want to we want to check our like we want to say 
if the time if the constant time that the program has been running minus the last time this event occurred is greater than the like the the period that we want this event to occur in the interval then it should happen again um, so for this we'll we'll need some global uh, variables uh, we need a global variable variable for uh, storing the the running time uh, of the whole prog program we'll just call that a uh, timer and then we'll need a, we'll need a, a variable for for the last uh, the time of the last uh, time that the event happened and we'll call that time since last event and these need to be initialized as zero so we'll do that in our init function And this is just because uh, in this way we are we are sure they are initialized every time we click in it. Um, if they were just being initialized up here, then they would only be reset when when the max program is uh, is restarted. So we'll say if timer minus time since last event is greater than and this is the interval we want the event to happen in we'll just say one second 1000 milliseconds then we want something to happen but right now our timer value isn't being updated so we need to we need to use our timer here um, and we'll do that by making making a function that we can we can call here to like we just want to call one function to update this timer value um, so we'll call that get timer sorry function and it's only going to be in, uh, in, in one line so we don't need the brackets here and uh, when we call the get timer we want to send a message to to the timer receive here uh, to tell it to update its new uh, its its uh, current uh, value. So we say timer, and we want to send a bang to it to update. And then it will send out here the new time, uh, and we want to send that back into Max. Uh, sorry, JavaScript. So we'll need a function for handling for for doing that, and we'll call that function get timer sorry uh, set timer of course because this is where we actually set the value um, so we need uh, this value here to be prepended by the message uh, set timer prepend set timer uh, and then obviously the it this like this will say set timer and then the time so that the time value we need to that that's that's going to be an argument in this function we'll just call that uh, val for very uh, valuable uh, value sorry um, and then we want to say our local value timer is now uh, what what we sent what this what the time object has has just sent to us like the actual timing um, and we want to call uh, call these two functions or actually we just we call this function and then this will happen as well uh, so we say get timer here so every time our loop goes through it will update our global value timer here to according to to the time in, in our timer object in max um, and so for instance like yeah that's that's basically it um, sorry not we forgot one very important thing because every time this event happens we need to increase uh, our time since last event with the actual time since last event so time since last event is now our global value timer um, and then 
this is where we, we would do whatever we wanted to do. <coughs> Just to make an example, I could make a receive object here called event and a button. And I would say mess name. So I click the initialize and it starts the it starts the timer and our loop function is uh, constantly being called and we could make this shorter obviously. So that's uh, that's basically it. This is an extremely simple uh, and um, this is just a way of, uh, of uh, like this is just a, a way I prefer uh, keeping track of time. And if you want to, if you have several events, you you'll just need one timer value. But you'll say you had one event that was turn an LED on. You would say time since LED on, for example. And you had another event that would time since. Uh, button press, and you'd you'd have to initialize these as zero as well, and you'd just basically copy the this whole thing. And your event here would be called like uh, uh, turn on LED. Like you get the idea, and the, like the button press would be, for example, to make sure that you. Like to to avoid noise, uh, like when you're when you're reading, uh, if a button is being pressed or not. Um, yeah, so I think that's it. I hope you this was useful in some some way. Thanks for watching.